This is the summary. We talked about the two levels of the opening pasuk of the parshas by Midbar, about Midbar and oil, Midbar Sina oil Moed. We talked about Moshe. He is considered the escort, like an escort that brings the chassan to the kala to bring Hashem to us. Aaron, his brother, is the escort who brings the Jewish people to Hashem. Moshe and Aaron represent iconic leaders who have embedded their characteristic within each of us. Moshe is the quality of Das, the capacity to join the intellect to the character. And this is what it talks about that in the future time, in Mashiach's time, we'll see the evidence of godliness. But in the interim, we have to engage our intellect to stir our heart. Aaron is the characteristic of elevating the neshama, and through this, we dispel the klipa. Then the Pasuk talked about that it was in the first of the month, the second month, and the second year. We talked about this quality of second. It was both the second year as well as the second month. This is a new level of, uh, 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 of uh, exiting from Egypt. We, the first level is we had to leave Egypt. We had to discard the klipa, and that made us eligible to receive this new level of godliness. And this is also indicated in there being the inner courtyard and the outer courtyard of the campus of the, uh, the Mishkan. We then, the passage goes on and talks about Su'es Reish, lift up the head. And we talked about that there are only the three heads, the three fathers, Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Avram is limitless giving, Yitzchak is orderly Yira, and Yaakov is compassion. And we talked about that compassion is linked with Das. And that's why you can't have compassion on a person with no Das, because then they just consider it as if they got away with something. They don't have any capacity to recognize what has been given to them. We talked about the different forms of Rachmanis, that as they are mentioned in the davening, uh, all across from the Pesukah de Zimra all the way up to the ultimate declaration of Shema, the oneness of Hashem. And then we talked about different ways in which we are able to repress the klipa. One is simply through uh, our efforts, described like a battle. And this is indicated in the word midbar, which is diber speech, expression, that is predicated by the mem and the open mem, as opposed to the, what we call the shlus mem or the end mem. And the openness of the mem rec, uh, suggests a vulnerability to being siphoned off by klipa. And that's when we have to deal with it in a form of battle. And then we have a method in which we are able to deal with klipa by simply bringing down such overwhelming godliness that it is able to completely to, uh, uh, remove this evil. And then we used an illustration that when a person davens, he may find himself suddenly bombarded by uh, distracting thoughts. Why do they only stir up during his davening thoughts that he would never otherwise think of? And we explain because at that moment that he is separating out the good from the bad, the evil that is the ungodly becomes so desperate because it will be forfeited if it doesn't have the good to uh, uh, nourish or, or suckle itself off from. And so it becomes desperation, and thus it attacks with its uh, intensity in an attempt to retain its identity. So in the times of the Beis Hamikdash, we didn't have to have this kind of battle, just like a king who's so great, he doesn't have to battle his enemy, who simply surrenders before him. In contrast to the times after the Beis Hamikdash, during the times of the Chorbin, when we do have to meet the enemy on his ground, and sometimes this is we might lose a battle to win the war, we may have to engage in the klipa, and the objective being to discover the godliness that's within it, and thus to suck it out of the klipa. In contrast to the circumstance where godness is so abundantly aware that no battle is necessary.